Hello, and welcome to Atlanta Anime and Gaming. This podcast is your guide to the vibrant worlds of anime and gaming right here in Atlanta and across the country. From interviews with voiceover actors and creators to insights from local gaming enthusiasts and industry leaders. So let's dive in and explore together. Hi, everyone. This is Rico Figliolini, host of this podcast. We're here at Anime Week in Atlanta, here in Atlanta. And I have a special guest here, John Swayze. Hey, John. Hey, how are you? Rico? Thanks for uh, joining me. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Lots of people here. We're, we're past COVID, or at least the triple down COVID. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. So it's, it's a good thing to see everyone out there enjoying themselves at AWA. It is. It is. This is a nice show. This is uh, my second time here. Uh, I was here about probably seven or eight years ago. And, and you come from? I'm from Houston. Houston, Texas. Yes. Sorry, I was going to ask you about that. So, too. Yeah, the, the, the two, uh, there's a, I work at a studio in Houston called Sentai Filmworks, right. which used to be called ADV Films. Right. Now they're Sentai, High Dive is their streaming platform. And then up in Dallas, you have Funimation, Crunchyroll, and their streaming stuff. But between the two cities, you've also got Rooster Teeth in Austin and right. Gearbox and Ocatron and all these other studios. But between all of those, Texas, I think, is like the mecca capital for <laughs> anime dubbing and subtitling in it, America. It is amazing to me when yeah. I first found that out. I was like, yeah. I know LA's LA. When I moved down here from New York to Atlanta, Atlanta became Hollywood East. Right. Uh, with uh, Walking Dead and, yeah. and everything else that came. And funny enough, you mentioned Walking Dead. Our company, Sentai Filmworks, right. got bought by AMC Network. So yeah. I'm now an AMC employee. <laughs> they have yet to ask me to be on The Walking Dead, but, you know. And that's, so, yeah. <laughs> unless they do another unless spin-off. Unless it's like spin-off after spin-off. I mean, they'll, they'll it's a gift milk of, that jersey yeah. till it's dried up. It's a gift that keeps on giving. But that, it's amazing to me that Texas is such a mega place. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone would have realized for anime, for dubbing anime. But. You know, I think it is really for a couple of reasons. One, uh, you had in Houston with ADV Films, you had a guy named Matt Greenfield and a guy named John Ledford who got together. They were friends, and uh, Matt was a big... They were both into anime, but Matt was really into it, I think, and I worked at NASA and all right. kinds of interesting stuff, but he's like, we should we should oh, wow. dub this stuff. No one's doing that. Yeah. So they just did it, you know, way back when. I mean, when I started working for ADV Films in 97, I mean, you know, you talk about a niche market, okay, and there really was... Right. But they were doing fine. They were doing well. Their big show back then was Evangelion. And, I mean, it was a great show. Still a, yeah, it's, I mean, that's a classic, you know. And It just kind of has grown and grown and grown. And, you know, fast forward, in my case, 27 years later, mm-hmm. and I'm, I work, ADV has become Sentai Filmworks right. and owned by AMC Networks. And I am full-time director and an actor and then also still do work for Funimation as an actor and, mm-hmm. so, and then go to conventions. So this, you know, 27 years ago, if you would have <laughs> said, this will be your career. I'm like, no, it won't. Really? There's no way. What, what did you think your career was going to be? I'm sorry. I'm off your table there. Your turn. Well, I mean, I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to do lots of things. I first wanted to be on Broadway, and that didn't happen. And then I was like, well, I want to do film and television, and that, you know. Then I was like, oh, I want to be on Saturday Night Live, and because I love sketch comedy and improvisation. And then I was like, but I really love voiceover work. And I was really into, really? Uh, in, the, in the early 90s, until I started doing anime, I was making a living being a voice actor, just doing commercials and television and, you know, radio spots and stuff like that. And thought, well, this is great. I'm doing, making a living. I live in a very affordable place. I'm starting a family, you know, it was, it was all really good. And then 1997, everything started to change with anime. Yeah. And uh, here we are today. So. so did, I mean, you know, just Texas being that place, big open sky, or maybe that's Montana. That's Montana. <laughs> Texas. We have pretty big open sky, but that's <laughs> Montana. Different. I mean, we're the Lone Star State. The Lone Star, yes. So, you know, I just never thought anime would be uh, taking it. But like you said, NASA, that person from NASA that started it, mm-hmm. now that makes a lot, lot of sense to me. Well, of why it, it became. Just, you know, I think, you know, it started to gain more popularity. Uh, one of the reasons is that it started to get on television. And, and you know, it's. Maybe not as much anymore because there's so many ways now to watch content. But I think back in the day, it was like, yeah, you can sell it on VHS and you can mm-hmm. sell it on DVDs. But if it was on TV, it had, first of all, it was free. 
I mean, you could go to you know Adult Swim, free right. Adult Swim. Right. You know, you're paying your cable bill, but you go to Adult Swim or any of those things and watch it for free. Mm-hmm. And things like Dragon Ball and and One Piece and sure. you know, you know, we started to get our stuff on there, and and you know, it would be shown late at night or at certain hours, and then it it just started becoming more prolific. But I think the real there's two things that happened. I think one is the collision, if you will, of the anime crowd and the uh, MCU Star Wars. All of those things kind of crashed into each other. And because, you know, anime fans love Star Wars right. and, you know, MCU and stuff like that. So those worlds collided. And then with with COVID, I mean, you can only watch Tiger King so many times, you know, and it's like, <laughs> let me let me watch this show called My Hero, right, you know? Right. And uh, so it's amazing to see the, the proliferation. Crunchyroll boomed. I mean, oh, the, yeah. the download of that app and then yeah. Hulu and Hulu Netflix and funding a lot of anime. Yeah. I mean, if you, uh, you know, I've got a table here, AWA, and I've got a card. And if you click on the card, you get a week of high dive for free. And it's, you know, it's just another streaming platform. Yes. But it's it's just, it, there's so much out there now. You the, know? the only thing high dive needs to do for me is improve their app just a little bit. That's okay. Other, other than that, you know, just like, can't tell sometimes if you watch the episode or not. I'm like, okay. Yeah, that, that's the only only thing. Crunchyroll, High Dive, Hulu, Netflix. I mean, all those. My kids I have three kids. They're 20, 27, and almost 30 now. 30 year olds here with his friend this weekend. So yeah. They're, they're roaming the floors of. Yeah. Um, but that's how I got into it. I mean, from Death Note, because one of them was into the dark stuff, like Death mm-hmm. Note and Hachin, and then the other ones were into rom-com and Slice of Life and right. My Hero and stuff. So yeah. so it's a cross-section. You've done, <laughs> you've done 400, cross 400 anime's voices? Yeah, and... I've done a share of them. <laughs> you know, and again, you know, back in the day, for me, I think one of the reasons that I did so much was because I never had that, like, you're the young guy, you're going to be the hero, the kid. I'm more of a character voice, so it would be like, well, you're you're going to be in the show, but you're going to be this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and then that director wants you for that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, you know. And so there just weren't that many people doing it, so I had an opportunity to really go and stretch myself as a as an actor and really get a lot of titles and characters under my belt, which has been a according to Anime News Network, I'm the most prolific male voice actor in North America. Really? So. How, do you, how do you keep it straight, though? Like, you so many varied characters in, that you that you play. Yeah. Now, I know it's voiceover, it's not life and death, but you want to keep your characters unique. Right. You no, know, for sure. For you sure. You know, for me, when I'm doing character search and or character research, I, you know, the first thing I do is I listen to what the Japanese actor did because the Japanese actor is the one that created the role and be a disservice to not only the creators, but to the fans. If I, you know, went in and, for instance, I'll give you an example, Lord Death from Soul Eater. A very iconic show, very iconic character. It's what I refer to as one of the gateway animes, because if you watch it, you will get, yeah, probably get into anime. Love to. And uh, that, Full Metal. And uh, the anyway, full metal. what's that? This the is second. It. Brotherhood, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. The one I meant. The good one. Yes, there you go. That was a great, that um, was great book. Like with Lord Death, you know, they had me come in an audition and I was like, I didn't know anything about the show. And I was like, oh, he's probably going to have this, you know, I'm Lord Death, Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And the director was like, no, no, let's listen to Japanese. And I was like, oh, oh, he's way up here like this. I see. Okay, that makes much more sense. (laughs) And um, so, yeah, so that's that's really how I do it. And then, you know, there's I mean, I when I look at I look at the physicality of a character, you know, look up what do they look like? You know, how would he how would he sound? And there's, you know, it's, there's also a difference between doing a main character versus doing a one-liner, what we refer to as Soldier B. Okay. You know, it's just, right. it's, it's, yeah. you, that was your line, you know. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Do you do most of your work in studio, I, I'd imagine, right? or remotely? Uh, well, I do, when I do work for Sentai, as a director and as an actor, I'm in studio because that's where I go to work every day. But when I do work for Funimation or other studios, in LA, I usually work with a friend of mine who has a studio in Houston, mm. and we just do it remotely. Yeah, you know, and it's very convenient that way. It's that it's a four-hour drive to Dallas from Houston, so you know you go up for four hours, go up four hours, work for six or seven, and drive, turn around, and drive home. It's uh, mm. okay. let's just say I've gone through a few cars. I've 
<laughs> and my share of tickets. <laughs> I would think. But in the uh, winter, in the winter in Texas, is yeah, probably. Okay. But that's you know again one of the things being great they they let me do it remotely. So, so you're you've done script writing too. A little bit of script writing, yeah. It's not my favorite thing to do. I, I'm not a writer by heart, but just by de facto, when you're directing, yeah. um, you have to rewrite a lot. Do you? you know, well, you get the translation. The translation gets well. We get the Japanese script. It's translated, right. time coded, and then a script writer localizes it and, and turns it into. When you hopefully, say, when you say localize, what does that mean? Putting it in a way that we would say it. In it doesn't. It doesn't mean like localize it to New York or Japan or Atlanta. Or to America. It, right. It just means take the language and to the bathroom. I now must go. We're going to put that in a way that says <laughs> I got to go to the bathroom right now. Right. Right. That's what we mean by localize. Do, do you find that maybe because I've heard this before, and some people look at translation and the subtitles, and they say, "Well, that's not exactly what the character said," but. Well, exactly. But that, right. But that's the thing. And, 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 you know, I've always thought you shouldn't do the subtitle version until you've done the dub version, because mm. then just take the dub script and make that the subtitled script. Okay, that makes well, sense. You know, that, to me, that makes sense. But the subtitle script is easier to get out. Mm. They can get out faster. Sure. But the problem is, is you're not putting the translation. In. But, it, you know, when you're translating a language... You can't change the context mm -hmm. or the message, but can say it in a way that doesn't sound stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be blunt, yeah. you know, you know, you, you don't want to get into colloquialism, colloquialisms, or whatever you say the word. You know, saying things like "heard," you know, as opposed to "I hear you" or "I understand." Right. You want to be up to. You want to. You want to. You don't want to say something that in five years they're going to go. What does that mean? Right. Yeah. It's a bit of that. Yeah. I guess. Do you speak a language also, or just? I do not speak Japanese. I don't. No. No. I mean, any Spanish. No, I don't. I should. I wish I did. No, but I can understand. I mean, I speak a little bit of Italian, and when I see people translate, sometimes it's like I don't think that's quite what they say. But all right, we'll go there. Well, and you know, languages is not every language is different, and it's not word for word. I mean, there's not a. No, for sure. For Coke can. Well, if. Coca, whatever can. I mean, it's it has. To, you know what they say in Spanish is the 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 can with the Coke, yeah, with the can that yes. possesses. You know what yes, I mean? It's yes, like yes. it's not just a can of Coke. Yes, you know, it's I don't mean, differently. So yeah, it yeah. can't always do it that way. That's why it's it's important to localize it and make it sound like you know. When you're watching it, you're not thinking about it. You're just yeah. listening and being able to engage. That that's a, takes a talent to do that too. Oh yeah, to be able to, oh, yeah. to get that. Sometimes because you also, on top of that, you have to make it fit in the lip flaps. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> it, it could be a real challenge. You know, it's the old joke of blah 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 blah. blah. Let's go. You know, <laughs> you gotta you gotta fix that. Yes. You know, you can't just leave it. You know. Do you have any kids? I do. I have uh, three kids, Olivia, who's 23. She's also a voice actor and an actor. Josh was 19 and Tara's 16. Are they into anime? Are they? Uh... Well, Olivia is, is a little bit. She's my oldest. She's also a voice actor, so she performs anime. Right. But then the son, Josh, is definitely an anime. My daughter, Tara, could care less about it. But they all have friends that love anime. <laughs> so every now and then I get to be a big deal. Well, that's cool. Yeah. We've been with John Swayze, uh, who is a, a big deal in, <laughs> in this industry. And just like that, we've reached the end of today's episode. A big thank you to our guests for joining us and sharing their stories. To our listeners, your support means everything. Remember to hit subscribe if you'd like to stay updated with our latest episodes. This has been Atlanta Anime and Gaming with your host, Rico Figliolini. Until next time, keep enjoying the worlds you love and take care. Bye.